The quality of our final stacked image is largely dependent on uh, two settings within NSG. Our choice of our reference image and the amount of gradient smoothness that we apply. In this NSG tutorial, I'm going to look at how to um, uh, choose the uh, best uh, reference. Now, one way we could do this is using PixInsight's uh, Blink uh, tool. So, the first thing we would need to do is to uh, attempt to normalize our images so that we can uh, properly compare them. And you can do this by selecting Blink's histogram feature. And the images are now approximately uh, normalized to each other. However, because uh, Blink doesn't use uh, photometry, the brightness scale factor um, that it uh, uses uh, can be quite approximate. Now, usually you probably uh, don't notice this because any error in uh, scale factor tends to get uh, compensated by using a different uh, background offset. So the images will look about right. But the invalid uh, scale factor will have other effects on the image. So, for example, I know that the first image is a very noisy image, but we can see here that the background looks very smooth. Whereas if we look at uh, image 9, I know that this image is actually uh, has much lower levels of noise. But here the background looks quite um, uh, noisy. We can see a sort of salt and pepper uh, uh, style of uh, noise. And this is all due to uh, um, different scale factors being applied to those two uh, images uh, incorrectly. But far more important to us in uh, this situation is uh, the gradient. And uh, invalid uh, scale factors will, uh, if the uh, brightness scale factor is too large, obviously our gradients are going to look larger than they really are. If our brightness scale factor is too low, our gradient is going to look uh, much better than it really is. So I wanted to uh, design um, a blink tool within NSG that could do a uh, fair um, comparison of our uh, images. So, um, because we're uh, um, calculating the uh, brightness scale uh, accurately for each image, there is a, an upfront uh, cost uh, in uh, blinking uh, large numbers of images. But we don't need to blink all of them. We can uh, limit um, to the uh, best uh, n images. So here I'm uh, blinking through the, uh, the best 10 images. And it chooses the images with the uh, least amount of estimated noise. And it's highly likely that our best uh, reference image will be amongst that set. So let's uh, start up our uh, uh, Blink uh, dialog. And it's now going away and uh, calculating that uh, brightness uh, scale factor, the uh, sky transmission, and also the uh, NSG uh, N weight, the image weight for uh, each of our images. So uh, we now have our um, uh, Blink uh, dialog, and uh, we can see that we're displaying the uh, first of uh, 10 images. We can see the uh, end weight uh, value um, here, and our uh, Blink images have been sorted by their uh, image weight. So as we blink through the images, um, we get to uh, successively uh, um, less good images. So it's quite likely that our reference image will be uh, in the uh, earlier rather than uh, later uh, blink images. We also have um, two uh, um, gradient estimates. We have a red and a, a blue estimate. Now this doesn't uh, correspond to a, a color channel. It refers to the estimated gradient between the uh, red sample boxes and the two blue sample boxes. 
Now, it's obviously uh, quite important that these uh, sample boxes are uh, looking at um, the uh, background uh, sky uh, and not uh, astronomical objects. So we can move those by pressing the control key and then uh, dragging with the mouse. Um, the uh, value of uh, each sample box is the uh, median of uh, all its pixels, which tends to be a very good estimate of the uh, background uh, sky value and tends to do a very good job of ignoring uh, any stars within the uh, box. So uh, we can also um, change uh, how the image is displayed. Now the first thing we need to do is we need to, uh, um, now, now that we've positioned our uh, samples, we can uh, hide those. And we can also change how the uh, screen transfer function is applied to our image. So because we're interested in the background uh, gradients, we can uh, increase the uh, contrast in the background by uh, moving our shadows uh, to the right. And we can also increase the image brightness by uh, moving, increasing the uh, stretch. And now we should be uh, able to uh, see the gradients in the image uh, more clearly. So I'm now going to start blinking through the images, and as I do so, we're going to keep track of the uh, gradient uh, estimates. So uh, we can see that the second image and uh, the third image uh, have lower gradients than our first image. So it may be that the, uh, the third image uh, might be our uh, ideal uh, reference. So I'm going to set a, a bookmark so we can remember it, and we see that the, uh, our bookmark image is the uh, third of uh, ten. I'll now continue to uh, blink through the images, and if we get to an image that we think might be better than the uh, uh, our uh, current best, so for instance this one looks like it has a, a very low uh, gradient in it, we can then blink between our best so far and our current image, and we use this button to do that. So uh, that's our bookmark image, and that's the uh, uh, current image. And we can see that the bookmark image has uh, higher estimated uh, gradients. But we wouldn't want to choose this uh, current image as our reference because although we're after um, a low gradient, what's even more important is our gradient is smooth. And in this image, we can see we have a sudden change in gradient in this top right corner. And uh, we don't want that to be uh, duplicated in all our target images. Um, sudden changes in gradient are, are much more difficult to remove in uh, dynamic background extraction in, in our final stack. So I think we should uh, use our bookmark image as our reference uh, instead. Now, at this point, we would um, uh, use a set reference and uh, We've, uh, we've done our, uh, our job. But I want to show you an extra feature. Um, if we decided that this frame was terrible, I actually think this image is fine. We can include that in the stack without any problem. But just as an example, if we wanted to exclude this image, we can uh, click the red button to remove it from our set of blinked images. Now if we uh, go back to our bookmark image, you can see that we now have bookmark in the uh, section uh, uh, header. We can then, the image that's displayed will be set as reference when we click here. Now, we can see that it's uh, set the reference. The reference is displayed in our target image list with a green italic uh, font. And it uh, reads the um, uh, focal length and pixel size from the uh, FITS header and uh, calculates the pixel scale. And uh, NSG will use those values for some of the uh, automatically calculated values that uh, a lot of the uh, um, closed sections uh, rely on. Now, the image that we uh, rejected in uh, 
the uh, blink is still in the target images. By pressing that um, X button, it only removed it from the uh, blink dialog. But we also have the option to remove it from the uh, target list. And uh, if we'd um, uh, deleted uh, uh, many images, all of those would be removed. Or we can not only remove it from the target list, we can also move those images to a subdirectory called uh, NSG reject. So let's, uh, for um, uh, demonstration purposes, let's remove that image, move that image to the uh, NSG rejection uh, subfolder. And we can see in the console that um, it's uh, removed one image from the target uh, image list. And it also shows us that uh, it's um, moving that uh, uh, target uh, image to the uh, NSG reject um, subfolder. Uh, right, well, I uh, hope you've uh, enjoyed this uh, tutorial and uh, please join me again for the next one.